<laughs> Tiny little wheels. <laughs> I've never seen a dolly with such small little wheels on it. So, this is the element, the element. Oh, if it was working, but it's not working. And then this goes. Yeah. <laughs> How old is it? <laughs> this is the door in the cinema. Alright, here's my Alexa 35 and these are some new big zoom lenses DZO sent me to try out. So I'm going to pull them out of the box, put them on the camera and have a look. So it looks like there's just one servo unit, so hopefully it's quick enough to swap between the two lenses. Yeah, they can just temporarily hold it. DZO Tango. And all one zoom? Alright, so I have these lenses because I have a short little project coming up that I wanted to possibly use some zooms for. So I thought I'd test out these ones. I love the look of zooms and longer lenses from movies in like the 70s to the 90s. People were really creative with them back then by sort of revealing characters or information to the audience with using a zoom. And I also remember learning about like Harris of Aders too and when I was getting into cinematography and, and he would just create such interesting moody images. Not all with zooms, but I was just like, what, what is this? This just looks, I want to do this. But what I think is cool with these ones is that they've got this huge zoom range from 18 to 90 and 65 to 280. And they come with this electronic servo motor, so you can be really smooth and precise with the zooms. It's like the ENG style, what the documentary people use. So this is the full open gate sensor on the Alexa 35. It, it has some vignetting around the edges, but that's going to happen on a Super 35 lens on open gate. But then when you crop it down to the 16 by 9 image, you can see there's still some vignetting, but once you zoom in from that wider end, it sort of goes away. Well, this is a white background, so you're gonna see it more. But it's cool how precise and fast you can be with the zoom on the motor. The light that's on her is a 600C, but I just taken the front off so there's no lens on the end of it. And it's set to tungsten and the camera is about 4,500 Kelvin. And then there's a few other white LED house lights on as well. So it's a pretty basic setup. I kind of need like, take that down, hold this like here. I don't know, I guess you could hold it like this, where you hold, you hold one hand here, and then the other just sort of holding this, but there's not really anything to grab onto. You know, for a heavy camera, like just grabbing this little box on the side. Oh, it's super heavy. <laughs> So this video isn't sponsored by anyone. I can say or do what I want about this gear, but I do want to mention that I have a collection of cinematography tutorial videos that I've created recently that you can check out in the link below. And in them, I dive way deeper into my process of how I go about pre-production and production as a cinematographer. It's mostly on-set practical scenarios, looking at lighting and blocking and camera movement, and you know, different kinds of problem solving that we always have to do on shoot. So if you want to check it out, you can find it in the link in the description below. So who's this lens for? It's a 18 to 90, 2.8 and a 65 to 280. 
A lot of other cinema zoom lenses in this category are a little more expensive. Some similar lenses are the Fujinon 19 to 90. <laughs> Man, if you ever go on B&H often, they're always on holiday. And another one is the Canon 17 to 120, which I remember using lots like several years ago. I used it all the time on music videos and stuff because it had such a long throw, like 17 to 120. You could get so many great shots in that one lens just zooming in. And then there's the Ongino EZ series, which is a little more expensive and it, it's a little faster, but it doesn't have as big of a zoom range as these ones. 18 to 90, like you don't have to swap that lens. You could just run that in most scenarios. That's why I thought it'd be cool to test it out because that's why I like that Fujinon 19 to 90 because of the range that it had. The amount of time that you lose in a day if you use prime lenses and you're just swapping them back and forth. But this one is pretty huge, especially when you throw it on a big camera like this. I think DZO has like a 25 to 300 as well, which looks gigantic. But I feel like if you're doing something long form or moving around with not much crew, like a documentary, this is a pretty crazy option when you have little tiny Sony cameras with autofocus. I felt ridiculous lugging this around the streets by myself. Everyone was driving by looking like, what is going on with this guy? What's he doing? And this camera is a little oversized for that tripod too, but I really didn't want to have to lug around that massive O'Connor tripod with it. So I guess this lens is more for the mid-range sort of filmmaker, maybe smaller budget features or commercials. It'd be good for sports stuff too. I do like the look of it though, it's really nice. I didn't think it was gonna have this sort of soft vintage feel to it, which it does. It's got some funky distortion on the edges and it's a little softer, which looks cool. To be honest, I didn't test it with charts or side by side with anything else. It's just looking through these random shots that I've got with it. So yeah, I'm probably gonna use it in the future if the project's on tripods and dollies and not handheld. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it, bye.